Freakers repeatedly said champs like Akshan and Nivea can have a high win rate of 52 and be strong to a low pick rate ban rate and many other factors that inflate their win rate. Surely Akshan sitting at 50 with all time low pick rate suggests he's underperforming. Um, yeah, so this is one of the challenges of our balance strategy. Our balance strategy tends to um, um, move characters towards 50% win rates. That does not mean 50% win rates are correct for every character, but that tends to be how a win rate based balance strategy goes, is characters will often be moved towards 50. The a potential negative outcome of a strategy like this is characters who need to be above 50 to feel good um, can potentially be too weak, um, and characters who need to be below 50 to be balanced can potentially be too strong. Uh, that's like the potential outcomes there. Um, and so it, it is very possible that a character like Akshan could be stronger than he is right now, and it's very possible that he like might genuinely be weak at 50. And you know. It just depends on the character. Um, the way I generally think about win rates on characters is every character has some sort of resting win rate. And when I say resting win rate, it's kind of the idea that every character has a win rate that they are balanced at, but it is not the same for each character. And so it's their resting win rate. And so as an example, I would expect Ezreal and Kaisa to be around 48 to 49. To be balanced to be like truly like close to balanced and if they were ever like 50 and above i would actually probably expect them to be overpowered in those metas um conversely i would expect a mumu to probably sit around 52 or 53 to be balanced again not to be powerful or op but just to be balanced and any meta where mumu moves 50 i would actually expect him to be weak and that's just like comes from like the knowledge of what I know about Amumu and his agency and his outplay potential and his rewards for mastery versus what I know about, say, Ezreal and Kaisa with how much agency and difficulty and mastery they have, right? Um, the hard part is that it's all kind of subjective, right? Like, my opinion on what characters' resting win rates would look like is going to be very different than, like, any other given person's opinion on what a resting win rate would look like, right? And so, and then, then tying it all back, one of the challenges then of, like, a win rate-based balance approach is characters who need to be higher to feel powerful or genuinely be powerful can sometimes like you know sit in these spots where they're like fine at 50 percent when in reality they might genuinely be weak right and like that can be that can be kind of rough conversely like you know if a character like ezreal is like chilling at 48 or 49 he like tends to feel pretty good about it right so that's a that's a challenge is like you it tends to like need to be on top of like hey here's a bunch of 50 percent characters are they actually good like an example of this is like like years ago um this was before he went we caught on in pro play um there was like a preseason that nerfed wukong by like three percent he went from 53 percent win rate to 50 percent win rate and it can be very hard to argue for a buff for a character after something like that happens because it's like hey he's he's weak he's really weak now but he's 50%. But he wasn't 50%. He was like 52, 53. He was resting at 52 or 53. But he's 50%. And so it can often be, you know, difficult to justify like buffing a character to 52 or 53 um, when sometimes a character might need it. Now, that said, the team does buff characters. Like they, as an example, this patch, they buffed Briar and Kale, both characters who were sitting above 50% win rate. And they literally just buffed them and said they were weak, right? So it's not like this doesn't happen. It's not like we don't, you know, buff some, you know, uh, characters that aren't chilling at 50. But just kind of like observing like the difficulty and the subjectivity and yeah. And so in regards to Akshan, like maybe he's a 52 character, maybe he's a 50 character, I don't know. Uh, I would guess though that if he's at like, if he's chilling at 50 and he's at all time lows for like pick rate and things like that, it could be that he feels a bit weak at his current st stat state. If we look at day zero win rate data, which again, isn't super reliable, can't really tell you exactly what's going on. But if you look at day zero win rate data and like you see some character and they went down by like 5% win rate and you don't think it should have happened, you're like, yeah, we nerfed them, but like not that much, right? Very often that can be an indicator of a bug. Um, one of my favorite ones of this actually was um, we shipped a patch and Thresh's win rate went to like like 60, 70%. It was insane. Like Thresh just had this crazy, crazy win rate. Um, and of course we hadn't touched him that patch. So we were like, what's going on here? There's clearly a bug if his win rate went up so high, what's going on? 
And it turns out what was happening is Thresh's lantern had a bug where the enemy VFX and only the enemy VFX would basically lag you out of the game if you saw it. And so basically, whenever Thresh threw his lantern, his opponents and only his opponents who saw it would basically like get like a massive FPS drop and not be able to play the game. <laughs> Which is um, really, really great favorable bug for, for that character. So, you know, naturally we hotfixed it very quickly. But basically he could like curse you with his lantern. He'd throw the lantern out and you'd be cursed and you couldn't play the game. What other fun bugs that have happened that got to live? So we had a bug once where Karthus was invincible on live, like couldn't die, literally could not die. Still didn't get like above like an 80 or 85% win rate. Turns out being literally invincible still can't win you games of League of Legends. 1v9 where? Like what the heck? My theory is it's because obviously if he couldn't die, he couldn't have his passive, which clearly makes him weaker. Um, so that one, uh, Viego one-shotting turrets. So here's how that one happened. That one's funny. So there was a patch after release, by the way, just so you all know, this bug was my fault. I directly introduced it. There was a patch after release. The patch after Vigo's release, he started one-shotting towers and we had to hotfix him. Um, the reason he was doing this is when he shipped, he did not track Magi's Soul Stealer stacks on his character. Okay, so if you bought a Magi Soul Stealer on Viego and turned into someone else and then turned back, you wouldn't keep your stacks, which obviously was pretty lame. Not that anybody's building AP Viego, but like, I was like, I will not stand for this bug. Viego must track his Soul Stealer in case he builds it in some troll Aram game. I don't know. Anyway, so I went to fix the bug. Um, and when you're messing with stacks of something, like you gotta like, you like increment and decrement stacks. So like, you know, I gotta be like, hey, you have this thing, and then I need to eat, add stacks or remove stacks to get to what you were, stuff like that. Um, what I didn't know is that if you try to go below zero on an item stacks, it has like a, I don't know what the programming term is. It's like a stack overflow thing or something, but it's like, it doesn't just go to zero. It goes to like negative a billion million gajillion or some really, really big negative number, and then starts bugging it out and gives you a insane AP value. Uh, integer underflow, something like that, basically. And so I didn't know about this. And so when I was like resetting his magis, I would just be like, okay, just subtract a bunch of stacks. And I didn't care if he went below zero, because I was like, well, if it goes to zero, it'll just go to zero. Like, I don't need to worry about negative stacks. Um, <laughs> Then the bug came out, and what would happen is, you know, he would go to negative stacks on his, like, Dark Seal or Mage Eyes, he'd get, like, a billion AP, and it turns out that if you have a billion AP, your attacks one-shot towers, because everybody has an AP ratio on their auto-attacks. So, you could just, as Viego, get this bug to trigger, and then just go and one-shot all the towers in a lane until you won the game. And then if anybody tried to stop you, you'd W them, which has a 1.0 AP ratio, and you'd one-shot them, and then you'd keep on going. The bug was Zareth and came from the fountain. Uh, where like they can stun or hit the entire map. Um, I don't know the exact details because I'm not an engineer, but there's a number of like rectangle checks in the game. It's so, like Zareth, Kane W, Zareth Q. And based on like certain under the hood stuff that happens at various times, those rectangle checks can break, especially when they like are shot off the map. And so we've had various bugs in League's history where characters like Zareth or Kane or Anivia or Poppy can like shoot things off the map and then that thing when it's shot off the map the game will be like oh it hit everyone and again i'm not an engineer so i don't know the exact details of it but like that's how it would work it's like basically if you're going to an invalid point that's off the map it like can potentially like screw up and make you hit everybody uh, through a rectangle check uh, there was this old bug way back in the day with Anivia where she would just shoot her Q, she would sit on the fountain and shoot her Q and it would hit everything on the enemy uh, and the enemy team. So everything on the enemy team would take damage and be stunned every like 10 seconds when Anivia was doing this. And she would just slow push the entire game and, you know, slowly kill and stun everybody as well. That was a, a nasty bug.